the iconic Campbell soup can. Warhol loved them, millennials don't. Sales of Campbell soup dropped 1.9% over the past year. In the spring of 2018, Campbell announced the departure of its CEO, Denise Morrison, and a thorough and critical review of the company. Everything is on the table, the company interim CEO said. But how did a company with cans embedded in a country's cultural fabric become so troubled? When John T. Dorrance introduced, many say invented, the idea of condensed canned soup back in 1897, the idea was gold. By extracting water from soup, Campbell could ship it easier and sell it cheaper. But Campbell had to teach consumers what condensed soup was. So Dorrance led in-store demonstrations and put out advertisements in national papers. All you need to do is add a can of hot water and serve. When it's made this good, it must be Campbell. The product took off. By the time Dorrance became CEO of the company in 1914, Campbell shrunk its offerings from 200 products to just one, condensed soup. Campbell's ability to churn out cheap, easily transported products made it a soup giant. Its chicken noodle soup helped feed the country when it was beset by the Great Depression. Its cans nourished soldiers on World War II battlefields. It bought Swanson TV dinners and frozen food in 1955 and Pepperidge Farm snacks in 1960. But even as the soup company grew, it remained at heart a family company. John T. Dorrance had been sole owner of Campbell when he passed in 1930. He bequeathed ownership to his three children, Jack, Eleanor, and Charlotte. The company didn't even go public until 1954 and even then only sold 13% of its stock. But Dorrance's descendants faced a challenge. Condensed soup peaked around the 1970s. New competition came in from Progresso's ready-to-serve soups and Neeson's new affordable favorite, ramen. By the late 1980s, Campbell's market share of soup was roughly 60%, down from 80% in the early 1970s, according to Fortune. Its profit was under pressure and new product lines were eating into old ones. So when John Dorrance's son Jack Dorrance passed in 1989, the family asked themselves publicly and privately whether it was time to sell the Campbell Soup Company. By then, John T. Dorrance's offspring had scattered into a number of different clans. There was residual tension from those that did not extend from John's preferred male heir, Jack. The family managed to band together to protect their family heirloom, but the question never really went away. In the 1990s, the company slimmed down, hoping to refocus on its namesake and restore its financial footing. But the microwave brought with it new competitors like Hot Pockets, food that, like soup, are easy and cheap to make. Efforts to bring its soup cans globally faced pushback from countries like Russia where traditional soup is ingrained in the culture. The company that taught America how to eat condensed soup was struggling to keep pace with today's young diners. Under Denise Morris and Campbell tried to reconnect through a series of large-scale deals beyond soup. It moved into fresh food, including its roughly $1.6 billion acquisition of Bolthouse Farms. It pushed further into snacks, paying $4.87 billion to buy pretzel company Snyder's Lance, its largest deal yet. But Campbell struggled to manage the fresh food business. It faces challenges in integrating its Snyder's Lance business. Competition is increasing and retailers are more hard-lined. And while many of Dorrance's descendants no longer work in the family business, they remain significant shareholders in it, holding the key to its future. Will they once again band together to protect and fix their family heirloom, or will they decide it's the end of the road? Campbell will announce the results of its review at the end of August. <laughs>